Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now, as you can see behind me, the environment we're in today is a little bit different. And I feel like for every other video that I show you guys, it keeps constantly changing. So you guys have to bear with me here. But essentially, this is my friend's place that I'm working with on restoring the Acura Integra GSR. Now, this was recently acquired and I believe the intentions is actually to have a paint booth in here for further car restoration stuff. So the yellow tape that we have laid down here is just gonna be the lines of where the booth will actually go in here. I have quite a bit of stuff to crank through. As you guys know, we have the 1997 Honda Civic hatchback. We have the 2000 Acura Integra GSR. And we also have my 1997 BMW 328i. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do. I'm happy to say that this will be a good spot for us to at least film today's video. But anyways, we have my 97 Honda Civic hatchback. This was something that I acquired from a vehicle auction. Essentially, it was a biohazard on the inside. It had no key, and it was a very unknown history as to what happened to it. We've made a, what is this? We're like on the 18th or 19th video that we made on this car, and we made a lot of really good progress. And now it looks like a car that you could you know, enjoy or, or sell or whatever that is. But knowing me and having the Honda bug right now, I really can't stop there. And I've been slowly modifying this thing and occasionally taking it to autocross events just to see what I can really squeeze out and maximize with this little Civic. Now it does have the stock D16Y7. So in terms of horsepower, it's uh, pretty abysmal for what it is. but. Since the car is so light and it's a legendary chassis for having the double wishbone suspension, there's a lot of good bones here and I want to be able to showcase to people what the best way to go about modifying one of these Civics is on a budget. Now where we left off is we did the DC Sports cold air intake as well as the hybrid racing short shifter. And that already transformed the car. The induction noise of the cold air intake coming to life as well as the nice smooth and crisp shifts coming from the hybrid racing shifter has really transformed this little car and made it much more enjoyable. But there's two things that have been bugging me with this car when it comes to taking it to autocross events. And the first one has got to be the seats. Now the seats in this car for day to day use, that's totally fine. And I think that was the full intention when Honda manufactured this thing. I won't say that these are the highest quality seats that I've ever been in, but they get the job done. And I think that's most of the manufacturing ideology that went into this economy car 25 years ago. So the one thing that I notice is when you take a corner is that I'm actually holding on here more than I am here in my hips. And it really takes away from the driving experience and there's nothing in terms of shoulder bolstering that's holding me in. So if I take a corner at a high speed, I can feel myself going like this or like this in the car. And even though I'm not, uh, you know, running a K swab boosted Honda right now that's got 400 horsepower underneath the hood, you have to remember that once you get this car up to speed, you treat it like a momentum car. And it's those little things that really can change the whole driving experience for this. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to show you guys the seats that I got for this car and I'll also go into more detail about aftermarket seats and what you should be looking out for. Should you buy a fixed aftermarket seat or should you buy a reclinable aftermarket seat or should you even go down the other path of maybe just finding another Honda OEM seat to swap into your Civic, which is also another great alternative. So we'll go into that. And uh, before we get into the video, I do want to give a huge shout out to Corbeau for sponsoring today's video and hooking us up with some seats that we can put in this little Honda. And I'll make sure to leave a link in the description for you guys to check it out. So to be able to do this stuff now, do the full trial run of being able to build a car that once was a dream of mine and having it become a reality, stuff like this just really, really hits home for me. I've never actually put in racing seats in a car before, so this will be a first time for me. But, uh, you know, there's gotta be a first time for everything. Just looking at these now, dude, they look amazing. The stitching is pretty on point. Uh, these are made out of uh, microfiber suede, so this is not your conventional cloth. And I'll go over the specs and stuff here in a sec. All right, now that we got these out the box, these are the Corbo A4s. So when you're in the market for an aftermarket racing seat, you're gonna have two different variations of style of seats that you can choose from, which is obviously the fixed back seat where it doesn't have the reclining ability and the reclinable seats. So there's definitely pros and cons to both styles of seats. 
And the reason why I went with reclinable seats is because I still wanna keep this car as most of a daily. And I think the biggest deal breaker for me with fixed back seats is the fact that I wouldn't be able to easily get in the back seats, which I actually use very often in this little hatchback. So for me, in terms of just comfort overall, I found it to be a little bit more desirable for me to be able to recline the seat so that I can toss stuff in the back. And it's not to say that there's nothing wrong with the fixed back seat, but I would say if you're more in the market for something that you wanna use as a daily, I think this is the way to go. The only drawback is reclinable seats tend to be slightly heavier because now you have all the reclining mechanisms that are happening in there. And on top of that, there is a tendency to have a little less bolstering on your hips because the way fixed back seats work is that this element would be closed off here and it'll just give you a little bit more reinforcement. So there's definitely pros and cons to both ways, but for me, this just made the most amount of sense. So these come in a different variations. I think uh, you can start off with their traditional black cloth seats and go all the way up to black leather, which looks really nice. But I thought the microfiber suede was just a, a next level up in terms of uh, quality of materials. And I'm actually very happy that I went with this material because it looks amazing in real life. And I think it's really gonna transform the way the car looks like in the interior. And after just sitting in these for a brief moment, I immediately felt the difference in my shoulders, especially how it hugs me on the insides here. And sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating ordering something like this online because it, the best case scenario is you wanna go in and you really wanna sit in the seat, you know, going somewhere like 425 Motorsports where they have a full selection of racing seats that you can sit in and see what you like most about it. And another thing too with fixed back seats is that since you're kind of sunken in more to the seat, it makes it a little bit more difficult to get out. Whereas these ones, it's very easy, you can get in and out. And you guys might be wondering what this thing is, but this is actually an add-on that you can get. And this one is a bladder for lumbar support. So if I squeeze this, it actually inflates the back lumbar support in the seat itself. And it really just adds a whole nother element, especially for me. I'm not saying that I have any back problems, but for me, I actually do prioritize comfort quite a bit, as well as you know the sportiness of being able to take this to autocross events. This was an absolute no brainer for me. And I'm very happy with the way they turned out. The materials look great. And I even see that they have this uh, leather on the sides that reduces the amount of wear that's gonna happen. So time will tell how these will look over, you know, long periods of time. I have seen the cloth seats and they do tend to sun fade if you have something that's gonna be baking in the sun for a while, but maybe putting some sort of cover on top of the seats could help. But I think these suede seats are gonna age very well as long as I don't spill my coffee in them. So before I put these seats in, what I wanna actually do is I wanna take some time and I wanna hook up the seat brackets to the bottom of the seat itself. So I believe what you're gonna need is just a six millimeter hex or Allen key or whatever you wanna call this. You're gonna see the, the four screws that are at the bottom here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide this bracket all the way to the front to hook up the front to, and then all the way to the back to hook up the back to. And then it's just a matter of removing the old seats and putting this one in. So it's very crucial that you keep all of the original bolts that come with your original seats. So this is gonna be four 12 millimeter bolts in this situation. So it should make things go relatively quickly uh, as long as you are just very careful. Now there's been times where I've worked on rusty cars and especially in the floor pans, uh, when water starts to get in there and they start get corroded, it could be very easy to snap one of these bolts off and then you're left having to secure your seat with only three bolts. So the one thing that I will say is proceed with caution, maybe use some penetrating oil before you start yanking away. And what I usually try and do is I'll just slowly turn it to the left just to feel the, the bolt starting to loosen up and then I'll go with it. But I usually don't even go with a, an electric ratchet till later. Okay, so we got the seats out of the car. It went really smooth. I didn't have any issues with any of the bolts. Thank goodness, because that could have been a nightmare. But now I'm over to the aspect now of having to transfer over the seat belt buckles. And since we don't have to do any major modifications here, the only thing that I do wanna note is that the driver's side has this plug that you will need to transfer over. And uh, you can go about any other way of, of uh, hooking that up. I think maybe I'll just use a quick little tastefully clapped zip tie uh, on the underneath side of the, the seat. 
But what I wanted to show you guys is just what it will look like fully installed. And it's just one 14 millimeter socket. And to remove it, you know, you just kind of have to he hoe it a little bit. But once it starts going, it starts going. And it's very easy to take it out and then you can swap everything over. And then there's two Phillips screws that are just gonna be holding the cover right here. So in that case, I think that this should go pretty quickly. Okay, so I haven't installed the passenger seat just yet, but I just wanted to take a moment just to show you guys my initial reaction and thoughts when sitting in the seat for the very first time. And it feels tremendously different the driving position, I feel like they really nailed it. And especially now with the hybrid racing shifter in this seat, it feels a lot more like I'm planted. Like I could take a corner and I could feel very confident about it. The seat itself is actually very comfortable. And luckily enough, my hips land perfectly within the bolstering. And I think you could be up to like a 36 inch waist for this particular seat. I know they have some other wide models, but for me, this fits like a glove and it just feels so right. And I think this, even with maybe something like a steering wheel upgrade, would really just transform the interior ergonomics for this little Honda. So I'd have to say overall that I'm very impressed with the seating position and the quality. And my favorite thing is honestly this add-on where I can change the lumbar support just by going like this quick few little pumps. I feel it in my back. And if I want to relieve it, I just push the button. There you go. And it, it feels great, man. I can't wait to take this thing out. It's going to be really awesome.